Let's move on to the next category, which is physical sciences. And this year's winner is a professor at the Center of Atmospheric and Oceanor Oceanic Sciences at the Institute, Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. He's also the director of the Devecha Center for Climate Change. He's the executive director at the Future, Future Earth Initiative. He got his PhD from the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center and did his postdoctoral work at the famous Scripps Institute of Oceanography in the US, the University of Bern in Switzerland, and at the NASA Goddard Flight Center in the US. To announce this prize, it is my pleasure to introduce the jury chair, Professor Srinivas Kulkarni. Professor Kulkarni is the George Ellery Hale Professor of Astronomy and Planetary Science at the California Institute of Technology. He's the former director of the famous Caltech Observatories. His primary interests are the study of cosmic explosions, neutron stars, and developing new methodologies for astronomical research. He is known for the discovery of the first millisecond pulsar and the first brown dwarf. In 2017, he won the Dan David Prize for his contribution to the emerging field of time domain astronomy. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Professor Srinivas Kulkarni. Uh, this year's, uh, the Infosys Prize 2018 for Physical Sciences is awarded to Professor S.K. Satish for his pioneering scientific work in the field of climate change. His studies on black carbon aerosols, the dark light absorbing microscopic particles in air which greatly influence the energy balance of the atmosphere over the Indian subcontinent, have enabled the elucidation of the role of these particles on climate, precipitation, and human health over the Indian subcontinent. <coughs> The jury panel consists of uh, Professor Jitan Goswami, former director of NPL, uh, Professor Ravi Shankar of Colorado State University, Professor Sudhi Sachdev, uh, chairman of the Harvard Physics Department, Dame Robinson, Carol Robinson of Oxford University. I think I have perhaps the easiest job in explaining why we gave prize, because all of you breathe air and notice the absence of rain. Uh, the Earth's climate is, in some sense, very easy to specify. Sunlight comes in, and some amount is radiated back, and the difference is what keeps the temperature. It's very easy to state for, to tell you what it is. However, the outgoing emission depends strongly on the constitution of the atmospheric matter. For example, if you have a large number of active volcanoes, as was the case hundreds of million years ago here in the Deccan Plateau, then you have carbon dioxide, and that traps heat, and the temperature of the atmosphere will increase, as in Venus. <coughs> if you have an impact by a small asteroid, or you could have dust particles, and in fact, the thermal balance can go the other way. The Earth can, in fact, the atmosphere can cool down. Uh, all this happened in the past, and for the last hundreds of thousands of years, uh, it's been very stable. Um, unfortunately, over the past several decades, human activity is such on such a scale now that it is making a noticeable difference to our climate. Carbon dioxide from fossil burning and methane from animals has resulted in gradual warming of the Earth. Any resident of Bangalore will tell you Bangalore is warmer now than 50 years ago. This is a fact. Professor Satish's work is concerned over the impact due to aerosols. By aerosols, we, in this field, one means small particles, <coughs> which could be particulate matter or even small drops. And um, aerosols are a natural phenomena. In fact, they're very important. Aerosols uh, precipitate water which eventually leads to rain. However, due to human activity, we are now introducing new types of aerosols, and the specific types do matter. The aerosols that are introduced by human activity or developing countries is mainly sulfate, sulfuric acid. It has a different effect. But in, uh, sorry, on developed countries. But in developing countries, particularly in the Indian subcontinent, the aerosols are very, uh, different and have a tremendous impact on the thermal balance. They're made of carbon, they mainly arise from diesel burning, coal burning, dung burning, and uh, these uh, can affect the 
thermal property of the atmosphere in rather drastic ways. Professor Satish pioneered the study of aerosols of the Indian subcontinent by actually making measurements using high altitude balloons, uh, instrument uh, aircraft uh, in a, with, equipped with instrumentation. Um, so what, what he found was that over the Indian subcontinent, there's a, the aerosol layer, which let's call it a soot, is typically at an altitude of three to four kilometers. It's very easy to actually explain the problem. So you have this dark particles four kilometers above, here's Earth, and these particles are now absorbing sunlight. So they warm up a bit, but those rays which have reached Earth and heated up the Earth are now no longer heated as much. They're absorbed as like a shadow. And you might say, oh, that's pretty good because it's less warm, <laughs> it's cooler, no. Because the net result is deadly because it turns out, in, as all of you know, the monsoons, monsoons come at the very end of summer. It is extremely hot and then the monsoons start. The temperature of the ocean is about 28 degrees centigrade. That on the ground is 35. That is the triggering criteria for monsoons. If you now no longer heat that ground because the aerosols are absorbing this, the monsoons are delayed. Your heat wait longer. And in the, the entire subcontinent, monsoons run the, it's the health and wealth of the, uh, of the nation. So <clears throat> uh, these are not small effects at all. And they're very specific to this, our subcontinent, and perhaps to, uh, in, uh, you know, perhaps less so to China. Anyway, his work has, we now understand the, solu the solution is pretty straightforward. Uh, diesel has to be replaced by CNG. Um, major power plants which uh, burn coal are replaced by solar. We may be just in time to prevent this particular local tragedy. Uh, however, I'm sorry to tell you, global warming will continue as long as all the nations around the world continue to pump increasing amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, for that, of course, we need a global solution. Uh, this doesn't sound like a great way to celebrate, but science is all about reality, and sometimes reality is very bad, but it's good to know what it is, and I'm very happy we are recognizing reality here, and so congratulations, Dr. Satish. And let's have a video now where Professor Satish talks about those little particles way up in the sky. I wish to study aerosols at uh, high atmospheric levels. One reason is because of aircraft emissions. Aerosol can reach stratospheric altitudes and uh, affect uh, stratospheric ozone layer. My current work is to understand the climate impact of light absorbing aerosols. In addition to climate, these microscopic particles also have a significant impact on human health and agriculture. Originally, I wanted to become an electronics engineer, but I learned about Earth's atmosphere when I was doing my master's in physics. I got interested in climate science because of its direct implications to the society. Join me in welcoming on stage Professor S. K. Satish. May I request Mr. Gopal Krishnan and Professor Kulkarni to join the presentation. May I request Professor Bhargava to present the Infosys Prize in Physical Sciences to Professor S. K. Satish. Thank you, Mr. Gopal Krishnan. Professor Sadish, a few words from you. Uh, good evening to all. I would like to thank Infosys Science Foundation for presenting this great honor to me. I would like to also thank jury chair and members of the uh, other members for evaluating my contributions and selecting me to receive this award today. This would not have been possible without the constant support and encouragement of my mentors, 
close colleagues, collaborators, and my students. And I would like to thank all of them. This is a long list. And specifically, I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Krishnamurthy, former director of Space Physics Laboratory of Indian Space Research Or Organization. And uh, he was also my PhD supervisor about 25 years back, from whom I learned the fundamentals of atmospheric aerosols. I am fortunate to be part of the Indian Institute of Science, which encourages early career scientists and promotes collaboration and cooperation. And the scientific freedom we enjoy at the Institute is unmatched in India and probably elsewhere. My father and elder brother were great inspiration for me. I would like to remember and I thank both of them. And most importantly, I would like to thank my mother, sister, and my wife, Deepshika, and my son, Sadeep, all are here uh, for their constant support and cooperation, especially during my absence in the family for uh, conducting, when I go for conducting field experiments. Thank you all. <laughs>